All right, so a while back, I did a tutorial on creating a light beam effect through some trees, and I actually did this a few years ago, and it was a simple effect of using channels to create a layer of the light that's in the in the image and then blurring that and with a radial blur to get that kind of light beam effect. The problem with that is, or not, not, not really a problem, but rather the limitation of that is that once it's applied, it's applied in one direction and that's it. If you wanted to try it from the light from a different direction, you would have to go back to the beginning and then reapply the blur from a different angle. Well, I actually discovered a really interesting way to achieve this very same effect, but have the flexibility of 3D here in Photoshop. It actually combines um, two tutorials I've done recently here on Planet. As uh, Of course, I mentioned the, uh, the light beam through the trees, but I also did a really interesting effect by creating a volume with uh, 3D text and having light beams as if they were emitting from uh, some text, and it was a really popular tutorial. So I started playing around with that same technique on different things, um, and specifically here on a photograph. So using similar steps, I'm going to go in my channels palette, in uh, this image here of these trees, and I'm going to go to the blue channel, because what I'm looking for is the channel that has the most, or that is darker compared to the sky in the background. So the sky is, a, is a simply white, and the trees and everything in this blue channel are really, really dark. So that's going to work perfectly. So we'll take that blue channel and make a duplicate. And on that duplicate channel, I want to darken up the darker areas of this image. I'm going to do that with a simple color fill. I'm just going to go ahead and press Shift Delete, which will be Shift Backspace on Windows. And we're going to go into the content section here and change this to, or it's already selected here, but in yours, go ahead and select black. And we're going to make the blending set to overlay. And that's going to ignore the white areas uh, that represents the, the uh, sky and make the darker areas that much darker. There we go. So that looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is I'm going to lighten up that sky a little bit. I'm just going to do a levels adjustment here and just brighten that up a little bit, those um, really bright areas of the sky. Just a little bit of a levels adjustment there. That way if there's any subtle gray areas in the um, sky area, that'll take care of that. All right. So now what I want to do is go ahead and load a selection or, or make an active selection of this channel. And uh, when I do that, it's going to make all the white areas... Um, selected and leave all the black areas um, unselected. So I'm going to hold down the command key on Mac, control on Windows, and simply click right on that channel, that blue copy channel, and you can see it makes an active selection of all the lighter areas. So let's reactivate the um, all three channels here and then go back to our layers panel, and there you can see our sky um, is, is an active selection. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new blank layer, and let's go ahead and fill that active selection with white. I'm going to go and press shift delete once again. And this time we're going to use white. And we're going to set the blending mode back to normal. 100% OK. There we go. So now that area is selected and filled with white. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a duplicate of that layer. Just simply press command or control J on your keyboard. We have two versions of that element. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of those layers by holding on the shift key and click on one layer and then select the other. And with both of them highlighted, we're gonna go into the 3D menu and go down here to new volume from layers. And when I do that, it's gonna give me these uh, convert to volume uh, settings here. Let's go ahead and leave those as they are and then we'll go ahead and click okay. Now what this is going to do is create a 3D volume and just so you can see, I'm just gonna create a new layer and fill it with black so you can see what's actually happening here. What it did, is I'm going to select on that 3D layer and just rotate it around. And you can see it kind of made a, a extrusion of those two layers. Just kind of like extruded, you know, it's kind of like transparent or translucent in a sense. But it really doesn't mean much right now. It doesn't look like uh, there's really a whole lot of interest in this. So what we need to do is change a couple of things with this image. Let's go ahead and turn off that black layer. So it made the volume, but I'm going to go in here in the, in the toolbar and select the camera tools and then go down here and choose the 3D Zoom Camera Tool. And we're not going to use the tool for anything, but we are going to go up here into the Options bar, and you see where we have these two settings here. You have the orth orthographic scale and then the perspective camera. So you have two different types of cameras you can apply here. So I'm going to go ahead and set the perspective camera, and you're start to, going to start to see kind of a zoom effect happening with that uh, volume that we created. Well, when it was converted to 3D, it actually shifted it back in 3D space. So we're actually going to scoot it forward so it looks like it's uh, aligned with the trees. So I'm going to go in into the um, 
toolbar here. And this time we're going to grab the 3D tools, not the camera tools, but rather the regular 3D tools, and select the 3D object slide tool. And go right in the image. I'm just going to click and drag down. If you add the shift key, it'll keep it uh, constrained in the middle. And as I drag down, it slides that graphic forward, and you can see the light beams are starting to emerge. Or rather, they're coming a little bit more into view. So now we're getting to what looks like what I had done in the previous tutorial with the light beams by taking that channel and then running a radial blur on it, and now the, the lights look like they're coming from behind here. Well, the added benefit of doing this in 3D and creating a volume this way is if I go and grab the 3D object rotate tool and just simply click and drag and move around, I can change the source of the light no matter any, uh, any place I want in this image. So I'm having that freedom of 3D to reposition it, so maybe I want the light over here kind of piercing through, or peering through these leaves over here. And that looks pretty good. And I can also do like I did in the other tutorial and add a layer style to this 3D layer. I'm going to add a little bit of an outer glow here. Let's give it more of a yellow. Maybe drop the opacity a little bit and enhances that glow. And because it's a 3D layer and it's got the layer style on it, as I move the 3D object around, the layer style will update with it as well. How cool is that? So we've taken it that extra step by being able to create the, uh, the light beams using the 3D volume, but then being able to ma manipulate its position right there on the fly, determining where we want the light source to actually be. Now, if I move this around and I determine maybe I want it to be right here beside this tree, you can enhance the glow even further by making a new layer. And we'll go ahead and make a gradient, and we'll just use a white um, foreground to transparent gradient here and just add the gradient right here in the center of the light source on that new layer. So it's on its new layer. So if I decide to go ahead and change position of the light, so let's say I go over here, it's like, no, I more want it on this side. So I can see it really coming from this angle over here. Then I would simply go and grab that little gradient flare and just move it to the new position of the light, and there we have the light beams coming through. So another interesting use of that 3D volume tool, again, the first time I did it, I did it to text, and it really came out kind of interesting, giving an interesting 3D light beam effect, but there's no rule that says you can't take that technique and try it on a photograph and achieve a very interesting lighting effect that you can change and update anytime you want. And sometimes it's even just cool just moving it around and seeing that effect change. It has a very realistic effect of something behind those trees moving past. Pretty cool stuff.